Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. This time, wanted to dig into yet another undead party member build. This time, let's talk about Delamere the Blessed. And her story is almost the exact opposite of Star in the Vein, in that I believe the starting build that you get for her is very, very solid, really good. Uh, quite frankly, there's only a couple of feats here that I wouldn't have taken. And Slayer is an absolutely fantastic class. Let's go ahead and dig into it. As a Slayer, you're going to get Studied Target, which means either as a move action or later on as a swift action, you can gain a plus one bonus on weapon attack and damage rolls. And the save DCs of character class abilities against the opponent increases by one as well. And all of these stats are going to increase as time goes on until level 20, when you can essentially get a plus six bonus on weapon attacks, damage rolls, and save DCs. Very, very nice stuff. You're also going to get sneak attack, which basically means if your character is able to attack an opponent during a time when they really can't defend themselves, you're going to be able to strike for extra damage. And the amount of damage that you do is going to increase steadily over time. And it's a very simple and systematic manner to set these enemies up to ensure Delamere is going to hit with a sneak attack damage and it makes her really able to just bomb on enemies from afar. At level 10, you get an advanced talent. I'll be honest, when I look at what she can do and her character sheet, I can't tell what Owlcat selected for her, but it's here and it's probably just something that I'm missing. So she selected something from this list in order to be able to help her do even more. And then she also gets Slayer Advance, which briefly increases her movement speed. This doesn't really help uh, this build all that much since she is an archer and doesn't have to move around a whole lot, but it's still nice that it's there. And then she's going to get quarry, which means as a standard action, you can in increase the bonus on your attack rolls and you can make it so that all critical threats are automatically confirmed. Very, very nice. And then at level 19, you get improved quarry, which means the bonus to attack is going to increase the plus four and you can select quarry as a free action. Again, very nice. And then all the way at level 20, you get Master Slayer, which is gonna allow you to make an attack as a standard action where an enemy has to pass a fortitude saving throw or die. I never use this because I don't think the DC is nearly high enough to be able to regularly hit the type of enemies you're facing at level 20, but it's there if you wanted to take advantage of it. And then for her background, she has none, while the deity, it seems like it's an empty slot, but you can pretty much tell from dialogue with her that Aristo is the person that she worships. Now, let's go ahead and dig into the feats that were given to her. Um, you, they start out with point blank shot, weapon focus longbow, precise shot, these are all very good, all needed, deadly aim, accomplished sneak attacker, um, they gave her Canny Observer. I wouldn't have done that, even though I absolutely love Perception. I think she gets enough, and I feel like it's kind of a waste of a feat to give her that plus four bonus, but it's there, and it's not a total waste. Um, then she also has Mini Shot. That's absolutely fantastic for an archer. Point Blank Master ensures that you don't provoke attacks of opportunity when you're firing in front of people. Again, this is absolutely fantastic. And then Cluster Shots. Once again, that's going to help you do more damage, and it's a great choice for her. So the feats that I really don't feel like work, um, of course, they added Canny Observer. Again, I don't feel like that was a particularly good choice. They added Snapshot here. I don't like Snapshot on Delamere. She doesn't have the sturdiness of a character like Lan, where I feel comfortable having her right up front. So for the most part, she's going to be way in the back of the line, and I don't feel like it makes sense to... Uh, gear her towards trying to be a snapshot specialist. So I don't particularly like this feat here. And then Dispelling Attack. Um, I used to really like Dispelling Attack, but the more I looked into how often it actually works, especially when you get to the higher level enemies, I just don't feel like it's worth a feat slot anymore. Um, I d still don't feel like it's been implemented in a way where you're really going to be able to dispel the buffs 
off of enemies that you want to. And so frankly, I would choose something else here. So definitely a couple of feats where I feel like they probably should have switched with something else. But overall, I think the build is very, very solid and it absolutely sets you up for success. Delamere was a monster for me during my Lich playthrough. Let's go ahead and dive into filling out her build. So she's already going to come with high ranks in perception, stealth and mobility. I would recommend definitely that you keep her on that track. And then for your first feat, I would say go ahead and pick up Rapid Shot. Of course, Improved Critical is very nice, but I feel like you, you're you gonna com more consistently get something out of Rapid Shot because you're gonna have that additional attack when you make a full attack. And I think that's more important at this point in the game. And then here at level 12, you get an attribute point. So go ahead and increase dexterity and continue increasing dexterity through all your level ups. Also a quick note about skills. Every other level, you're going to get an additional skill point. You can kind of put this wherever you want. Um, there's another character you get as an undead party member who's going to specialize in athletics. So you could put it into athletics since she already has some ranks there, or you could distribute it somewhere else if you like. And then at level 12 for your Slayer talent, we're going to go into combat trick and then get improved critical. Longbow. Now, Outflank is available right now. I choose not to get it because I feel like around level 12 is probably when you're going to get the fourth rank, fourth mythic rank um, that you can use to go ahead and get improved critical mythic. And so you have to take this in order for that to be available. But if for whatever reason you plan to do that later on, like level 13 or whatever, you might want to go ahead and switch it and take outflank first and then take improved critical up to you at level 13. Take outflank. Like I said before, I feel like this should be on all of your melee and your archer combatants. Very, very great stuff. Increases the uh, bonus that you get for flanking an enemy and allows you to react when one of your party members scores a critical hit against a creature that you're close to. At level 14, I go back into combat trick and then get improved precise shot. So you should definitely be using true seeing, but remember that only applies to the concealment that enemies get from magic powers like mirror image or invisibility. You're going to need something else if you want to bypass the concealment that enemies get from natural concealment or things of that nature. And so improved precise shot can help with that greatly. At level 15, go ahead and pick up critical focus. At level 16, get weakening wound. So this uh, means that every time you do a sneak attack against a creature that has damage reduction, the damage reduction is going to be reduced by two rounds by an amount equal to the character's level, which is huge. The vast majority of enemies you fight in this game have damage reduction and being able to lower it will bring up the amount of damage most of your party is able to do. At level 17, take tiring critical at level 18 go ahead and take crippling strike so this means that every time you do a sneak attack against an opponent um, they are going to take two points of strength damage the lich already has a power that i definitely recommend you use on a regular basis called exsanguinate that does a massive amount of strength damage i think by level 20 i was doing around nine maybe ten points of strength damage every time I hit an enemy with this. So it can actually be a great debuff, just hit bringing enemy strength down to zero, which Delamere is going to help the Lich be able to do. And at level 19, gonna go with Exhausting Critical. So you only get access to this if you've already taken uh, Tyrant Critical. So I only take this on classes like this where it has a lot of feats for you to be able to play around with but being able to put the exhaust status on any enemy that i crit is very very powerful and then at level 20 go back into combat trick and take hammer the gap so i never take hammer the gap on melee party members or at least i don't take it till the very very end because remember it's not just about how many times you attack it's about you have to hit consecutively so 
even if you have six or seven attacks, if you miss three or four of them, hammer the gap is not gonna help you. But by this time, Delamere not only has a lot of attacks, but she should be hitting on a very, very regular basis and hammer the gap is going to help her quite a bit. Okay, now that we're done with the character levels, let's go ahead and look at the mythic options. At mythic level one, let's go ahead and take cleaving shot. Remember that you get her at level 10, so you're going to be able to choose three mythic options right off the bat. At mythic level two, we're gonna go ahead and take rapid shot mythic. At mythic level three, we'll take ranging shots, which is gonna increase her ability to actually hit enemies. At mythic level four, like I mentioned before, we wanna improve critical longbow. At Mythic level five, go ahead and pick up Distracting Shots, which again is going to make it easier for you and your entire party to hit enemies if you're able to lower their AC. At Mythic level six, we'll go ahead and take Deadly Aim Mythic, give you some more damage. At Mythic level seven, we'll take the bigger they are. Definitely by this time, you're gonna be facing a lot of large enemies, so you should really be able to get use out of this. At Mythic level eight, take Flawless Attacks. By this time, you should be doing a ton of attacks every round, so you're really gonna be able to take advantage of the lowered penalty on your iterative attacks. And at Mythic level nine, I would say there's really nothing else here that's all that's great for you. So I go ahead and pick up Inspirational Leader. Um, Delamere was known as a legendary priest and someone who was an inspiration to a lot of people while at the same time developing a ton of enemies from how effective she was. So I feel like inspirational leader really fits with her. And then for level nine, you're probably going to want to go ahead and get mythic sneak attack. Okay, so now that we're done with the character levels and mythic levels, let's go ahead and look at the items that she has available. Remember, she does not have a spell book, so no spells that we need to look through. Um, for the boots, I gave her expedition boots, which gives her a plus 10 competence bonus on athletic skill checks and a plus five competence bonus on mobility skill checks. For the gloves, it's kind of a holdover from earlier in the game when I had Nanyo around a lot. These gloves, whenever she does a critical hit, the enemy suffers a negative two penalty on saving throws against mind affecting conditions. So we use this up to set up Nanyo, but long term, um, when you have a full undead party, you don't really need these. You can switch it out for something else. The belt gives her a plus six to dexterity. And if she confirms a critical hit for the next three rounds, she will get a plus two circumstance bonus to attack and damage rolls. The armor is actually the same armor that she originally gets in the game. She doesn't get hit very often, so I didn't feel particularly motivated to switch it out. And I just like from a role playing standpoint that she's running around with her original armor that she was legendary for. In the next slot, I just put a natural armor necklace here. Um, beforehand, I was using the amulet of the quick draw which gave her a plus two insight bonus on attack and damage rolls with ranged weapons against large and bigger enemies. But of course, when the quarry is upgraded at level 19, I believe, then this is not nearly as useful to you. The plus four bonus on initiative rolls also isn't that useful considering how high you're getting your dexterity up to. Um, I gave her a headband of wisdom plus six just to give her a little bit better saves. Nothing special there. Um, the goggles give her a plus 10 competence bonus on perception checks, which is definitely good for her. And then if she does a critical hit with her bow, a target will become disoriented for 1d4 rounds, suffering a negative four penalty to initiative checks, attack rolls, athletic, and perception checks. Really, really good stuff there. The skin cloak forces enemies to pass a saving throw of 29 or they'll become partially skinned, which means they have to, um, if they fail to save, they'll become staggered and take two points of constitution drain per round for 1d4 rounds. Great stuff for her. Merciless Shot gives her a plus one to attack as long as she's using point blank shot, which you should. And then she has a ring of sharp uh, strike, which means that enemies will suffer a negative one penalty on attacks for one round if she shoots the enemy while they are engaged in melee combat, which should definitely be happening all the time. And then Lesser Braces of Archery gives her a plus one competence bonus on attack rolls. I have never seen an improved Bracers or Greater Braces of Archery. This is the only version that I've seen. So if you all have seen like different late game versions and maybe I'm missing something, please definitely let me know. But I was really, really looking out for this and I had to hang on to the braces for a long time <laughs> when I felt like really I should be able to find something better at some point. But anyway, um, and then the bow that I'm using is a plus five bleed long bow, 
which means when it confirms a critical hit, the enemy suffers 1d6 direct damage for every 5 feet that enemy travels for 2 rounds, involuntary movement included. So obviously there's a lot of nice ways you could play around with that if you wanted to, but overall it makes her a very, very strong combatant. Delamere absolutely wreck shop during my Lich playthrough. In fact, there was one point where she was the real anchor of it and was probably doing even more damage than my Lich. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing your feedback. If there's something better or different I could have done that you feel like would have been more effective. Looking forward to seeing all your feedback. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like down below, share this con content and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.